Hello Zero K fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Little Bunny Wabbit vs. Flipstep on Isis Delta. So let's get started with that. So Isis Delta is, as should be pretty obvious, an asymmetric map, which is not that usual for Zero K, but it is on the competitive map list. Anyway, both players starting out in the top left and top right corners. Little Bunny Wabbit starting out very quickly with a Spider Factory, which is not at all surprising given the terrain. Spiders are extremely effective at dealing with lots of hills and plateaus like this. They aren't the most effective at dealing with water, but a lot of this water is crossable by ground units, so you see these little Ismith T, or no, Ismith, a little land bridge type thing here. So it's not impossible, but it is a bit of a challenge for that. Whereas Flipstep is just going for a Clickybot factory, a pretty standard start. Clickybots are fairly reliable, not particularly unusual, not particularly special, except for the amount of EMP that they have, which is extremely useful for stunning everything. But yeah, spider bots are kind of rare to use. They really rely a lot on Venoms, which are EMP shooting unit, and Fleas, which are the weakest raider unit in the game, to the point that other raider units are as riots to them. Riots being the anti dedicated anti-raider type of unit. However, Fleas are extremely cheap, and costing only 20 metal each, and they are... While not powerful individually, you can easily get large groups of them, and as Little Bunny Wabbit is demonstrating, you can also set them up very easily to scout out, so you know what's going on. The spider Bot Factory is essentially built around ambushes, having the flea set up almost as a map hack. So you know where your opponent is because of the flea, and then you set up your spider, your venoms, like this, and other units, recluses being the artillery unit, and similar other units. You have set them up and have them attack when your opponent is essentially most vulnerable. Mind you, if completely undefended, Warp Builders can be quite nicely dissuaded, as demonstrated here by even a single flea. Anyway, Flipstep, on the other hand, is going around now flea hunting a bit while expanding. He has all his main metal extractors set up and doesn't really have to worry about being attacked too directly. Isis Delta, because of the fact that both players start in the corners, there's not much to be concerned about when it comes to being attacked. And except over the hills like this, which is, which is what exactly what Little Bunny Wabbit is doing. So even with that, this blade will have no problem taking care of the flea without too much issue. On the other hand, Little Bunny Wabbit has not actually been attacked yet. There's been no glaze coming in. Flipstep has just started sending in some raiders to deal damage, and the Venoms are coming at them. As soon as the Venoms stun it, that will be killed by the nearby fleas right here. Mind you, one of the hard parts about, as we see right there, playing spiders is make sure your fleas don't get stunned while trying to keep another unit locked down, which involves rather careful micromanagement of the flea. But if you do that right, then you basically have free shots. There's nothing your opponent can do about it other than try to get other support units to kill off the Venoms. And it's very annoying if you have no support units around. So Flipstep continued to expand quite well. On the other hand, Little Bunny Wabbit has been expanding a bit more slowly, much more focused on streaming out military. And Little Bunny Wabbit actually has a fairly strong energy economy. His metal economy is... kinda needs help. He's building up more metal extractors, that will do the trick. On the other hand, Flipstep is much weaker in energy. About the same strength of metal, actually. He's focused... Actually, he focused a lot on skirmishers, which is not at all surprising given that Venoms really need to be attacked from range. Skirmishers have great range, so taking out the Venoms is not a big deal. I think he might want to focus on... He might want to focus on getting more Glaives, though, because Glaives are really powerful against the Spider-Bot factor. None of the spider bot units are especially strong, especially for cost. While the Venoms are quite annoying and the Skirmishers are a good answer to them, the Glaives can basically take care of everything in the factory, so it would be likely the best idea to just spam Glaives. Any other units would be too slow to deal with this. Even the Rock was a little bit risky, but like I said before, EMP is still very important. Having a couple groups of Glaives would be wisest, though given that the Venoms will be locked down trying to stun things, Nothing matters with the commander actually getting hit quite hard by the Venoms. He is able to get away, but... Or it is able to get away, but it does get stunned right before he able to jump... Right as it jumped away, which means it's now totally locked down. The Fleas can have a field day with it. However, Glaive's coming in to deal with this. Doing what they can, but even then... This Venom here will be destroyed, and this Glaive is basically the savior Glaive, but... No other support units coming in to be able to deal with anything here, which means... Little Bunny Web's attack has been effectively repelled, however, it's also been a very good distraction for him to build up. He does have now about 3 metal income over Flipstep. Flipstep has... well, he actually has a lot of reclaim now, so he is taking full advantage of that. But... Whether or not he uses that, he's actually not using that, he is... He is losing metal, he's wasting it, not building any units from his factories. 
not building any further factories if you wanted to. At this point, I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't quite have the metal income to support that. But still, not building on the units, or just now building units. That was a lot of metal wasted. The little bunny weapon, on the other hand, has probably not wasted any metal. He was pretty low before, and he's just now getting an income that will actually support it. Actually, he hasn't even morphed his commander either, so he's really focused on his units. He is entirely focused on units. Getting a recluse now as well, so he is quite able to deal with everything that has been sent so far by Flipstep. Like I said, it really is a question of numbers and setting up these units separately. The Glaives are very effective against these units if they can avoid getting stunned, which, since Venoms can only target one unit at a time, despite their splash damage, if you have a bunch of Glaives surrounding a group of Venoms, the Glaives will win. But Flipstep not building enough units, which means he can't even try to do this. However, it does appear that he is sending some of his Glaives over to the south. Not sure if he's going to be going to try to harass from the south, or if he's going to be just flanking the units that are coming in. And he is going for the flank instead, which, like I just said, is what you need to do against spiders, is flank them. and needs You need to make sure that only one, or the minimum number of units, is being hit by a Venom at once. And this is exactly what Flipstep is doing, which is wise. However, like I said, he's still way behind in unit production. Little Bunny Wabbit is, I mean, both ahead in economy and unit production, while Flipstep slightly behind in economy, actually losing quite a lot of energy. It appears that, well, he's focusing a lot on energy production, but he did not have as much energy production as it would appear that, well, actually, these metal, these wind generators here by the metal extractors are what's really giving Little Bunny Wabbit a boost. Flipstep just getting his metal, his wind generators here, and that's even then not enough. Like I said, he still needs to be building units up, and he is not. He's focused pretty heavily on getting some more economy going, getting more metal extractors, but he has nothing to defend that. He doesn't have to support it. Whereas little bunny wabbit has nothing to worry about since he's keeping Flipstep locked down with the venoms, and the Reckless is of course able to just take care of everything from a distance. They don't have to worry about it. No fleas being built. I'm a little bit surprised that. Little Bunny Wabbit hasn't dropped a few more fleas for scouting. He has one up here, but I mean, in general, keeping the border contained so he knows exactly what's going on, what units are coming out, because Flipstep could be sending harassment units to the south to take out the economy. None of the economy here is defended, so Flipstep could send five or... not even five glaives, like three or four glaives down to the south and get in that way. Because I do believe there is a path along here. Yes, there is a path just through this shallow area here. He could use that easily to get through. And I do not see him doing that, which means that he's not likely to have any way out of this. In fact, I think Little Bunny Wabbit is moving for the kill at this point. The Venom's coming in, and is he building anything else? He's not. He's continuing to build Venoms, he is continuing to build his economy, he is not going for air or going for... In fact, Little Bunny Wabbit, his economy is... He is also actually wasting metal at this point, he may want to go for air. We see that an amphibious operations plan has been built for Flipstep, which is an interesting choice. On a map like this, it could help. He might be using it for... Probably will be using it for some raiders on the side. Getting one duck. Ducks are interesting units. They are... They... Actually, I'm not sure how they are in this version. Last time I played, I was playing the test version where they have a nice homing rocket attack, which is extremely useful. But I don't know if it'll matter right now. Flipstep losing his Pokebot factory to the Recluses, and he will soon be losing all these power production facilities as well. I don't see any radar for... I don't see any radar for the little bunny wabbit, but Flipstep does have it, which is not actually that useful. He's not seeing anything with it right now. If we moved it more forward, or built another one more forward, it would be quite useful, but he is not doing that. In fact, this stinger as well, I'm not... He's clearly going for a bit of a side economy, trying to rebuild away from where he's being attacked, but I think... Little, I, I don't see any way out of this. The little bunny wabbit is clearly just going to be able to tear apart the infrastructure that Flipstep had built up. Flipstep is way behind in his economy. His... I mean, he has 16 energy and 13 metal compared to 24 metal and, uh, 24 energy and 18 metal for Little Bunny Wabbit. And Little Bunny Wabbit can just keep producing the recklessness and Venoms. He doesn't even need to build up beyond this. And even then, he is now morphing up his commander. As we saw in the last game he, he played, he seems to like morphing up his commander right as he's getting a huge economy. But it won't even matter. Flipstiff surrenders, and that was that game. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll have another shortly. So stay tuned, everybody.